Hi everyone, welcome back to Vivid Iceland. In this episode we are headed out west and we are in Snæfellsnes. You can probably see behind me the famous black church called uh, Budakirkja. We're going to go check that out as well as meet a couple of friends here and we're going to go exploring, see what else we can find around this little peninsula hanging out uh, just a little bit north of uh, Reykjavik. So stay tuned and let's go. Once a prosperous fishing village during the Middle Ages, all that remains now at Bulir is a hotel and the striking black wooden church. Built in 1703 as a turf chapel, it remained a place of worship until 1819 when the Danish King Christian VIII ordered it to be demolished. But uh, in 1849, the priest's council allowed for construction of a new house of worship so long as the locals would finance and maintain the building. This church has been renovated further over the years and in the 1980s the church was relocated slightly and reconstructed according to its original Danish design. A woman named Steinen Sveinsdottir had been caring for many of the relics from the old chapel including the door latch engraved by the original builder back in 1703. We start our first full day on the peninsula by taking the stunning mountain pass around Snæfellsjökull. It's a well-maintained gravel road that is easily drivable with a 4x4 and should be manageable for a sedan if you take some caution. Rental cars, drive at your own risk. Snæfellsjökull is a 700,000 year old stratovolcano located at the very tip of the Snæfellsnes Peninsula in western Iceland. A small glacier sits atop this volcano, which is the main obstacle to reaching the summit. Guided tour companies make regular summit trips and we'll have a link to them in the description below. Snæfellsjökull is one of Iceland's most famous sites, primarily due to its mention in the Jules Verne novel Journey to the Centre of the Earth. Before we reached our next destination, we jumped out to stretch our legs at Sönghetlir. Sönghetlir, or Song Cave, is a cave system located along the Snæfellsjökull mountain pass, close to the southern edge of the peninsula. According to local legend, the 9th century settler Bardur Snæfellsaus, I hope I pronounced that one correctly, uh, he sought shelter here for some time, but uh, we'll talk more about this character later in the video. Inside the main cave, there are etchings of people's names dating back quite a number of years. The oldest one we could find looked to read 1754.
The last cave, located at the top of the hill, has a great porthole that you can pop your head out of and get a great view over the southern coastline of the peninsula. Right, so just a little bit down the road from the Black Church, we have the cozy little town called Arnastapi. Uh, this place is probably most famous for its sea cliffs and the massive basalt columns that sort of run off into the ocean. Uh, there's also a lot of bird nesting areas here. You'll find uh, fulmars, cormorants, um, what are the other birds called? Arctic terns, and a whole bunch of other ones that I've got no idea how to identify, but we're going to shoot a lot of these. Well, not with a gun, with the camera, and uh, you can check them out in a few moments. The big stone statue on the coastline is of the famous settler Bardur Snæfellsás, a half man, half giant who settled on Snæfellsnes during the 900s. He named the area Snæfellsnes due to the big snowy mountain at the end of the peninsula, the big Snæfellsjökull, which means snowy mountain glacier in English. The story of Bardur Snæfellsás is an interesting one, to say the least. Once. After flying into a rage over a familial dispute, he ended up killing his two nephews and breaking his brother's leg. He felt such shame over this incident that he left his farm and all his belongings to a friend, and then he ventured off into the glacier, sitting atop the mountain he named upon his arrival to the island. He was never seen again. How many birds can you recognize? No? Two? Maybe? Seagulls? <laughs> yeah, I guess they're full mars, the white ones, and um, I don't know, cormorants. I think there's some black ones flying around too. So uh, very hard to see. There's some tiny little ones just on the rocks there, eating the uh, seaweed or something like that at least. Arnastapi is also the base camp for a few tour operators that take regular trips up to the summit of Snæfellsjökull, as well as hikes and horse riding in the local area. We were incredibly fortunate with the weather, as there wasn't much wind and the sun was shining. It was a rare Icelandic summer day. The rocky basalt archway over the churning ocean can give an incredible lookout over the coastline if one dares to cross it. Okay, so about five minutes drive from Arnastapi, you'll come to Londranga, which are a bunch of sea stacks out in the sea here, right on the foothills of the wonderful Snæfellsjökull. So I think we're going to take a walk now, see what we can find out there. Londrangar are all that remain of a volcanic crater that has slowly been eroded by the ocean. These mighty structures can be easily accessed through the mossy lava fields surrounding them and it is also possible to surf just off the shore in the shadows of these pillars. It's also worth noting that the fields surrounding these basalt cliffs were never used for farmland and this is due to the large community of elves that are rumoured to live here.
Built in 1917 and then subsequently rebuilt in 1947, the Malarif Lighthouse was built to assist the local fishermen while they fished off the coast. It's also the location of the Snaplesnes Information Centre. Diopalon Sander once hosted a thriving fishing village but has long since been abandoned. Its claim to fame today is the wreckage of an English fishing trawler that was sunk during a violent storm in 1948. Only five of the 19 crew members survived the ordeal. The lava rock formations on this beach have a magnificent reddish hue and I reckon this one's probably a little bit more impressive than Reynisfjara on the south coast. We also made a video about this and I'm going to link this in the top right corner now. Flying up and gaining a raven's eye view over the landscape above this beach, one can make out massive lava ripples originating from some ancient eruption of Snæfellsjökull, and, and it's quite fascinating as well to see how the ocean has eroded the land and exposed the internal lava rock structures. On our last day in the west, we drove to two massive craters on the edge of the peninsula. One of them was in fact a drive-in crater, which is not something I'd ever thought I'd say. It gave off a very Roman amphitheater vibe. The other one, you could actually hike up and around, get on top and have a look inside as well. That's all for this time over at Snaples Nest. Uh, I think we'll make this a part one. We're definitely going to come back for a part two, maybe even a part three. Um, a lot of things we didn't catch this time, so uh, yeah, I think we'll definitely be coming back to see well, maybe some more horses and some other beautiful things around the countryside. We'll see you then.